All right, as we uh, as we get into the questions, I know there have been a couple of questions that have come in while uh, while the presentations have been ongoing. I think we've we've got three of them so far, uh, four of them actually now. Uh, the first one was from Ruth, and she was wondering if we've ever looked at taking nitrogen credits from atmospheric deposition in our nutrient recommendations. And Ruth, I, I know you work for NRCS, and so I you know that is something that I've I've thought about uh, myself and trying to figure out how to take those credits from deposition, like how do we know what deposition is in a certain area? And so I think that may be something that David's group and, and others who contribute to that National Atmospheric Deposition Program might be able to help us with, right? If we can get maybe county level average deposition deposition rates, um, maybe we can incorporate that in, into into our recommendations. And then I think maybe that's, uh, that's definitely worth uh, further discussion with with David and his group there. Um, the second question was from Julie, and she asked, "How does urea that's used in diesel exhaust fluid increase ammonia emissions?" And so, um, I I know barely a little bit about that. Um, there there are some ammonia emissions that do come out um, of the tailpipe of of vehicles using diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, David, do you have any further? Um, insight into that that one i don't know much about the chemistry but i do know that the big trucks and newer automobiles are both sources of ammonia but the chemistry that i don't know okay thank you and jesse jesse do you have any uh any thoughts on that at all yeah um i um i've been involved with some of the um the modeling of that um i again like i was involved with the air modeling of it, not the emissions. So I'm not super up to date on the chemistry. I do know there is there or there are emissions associated with that. I also know there's measurements associated with that, uh, particularly at like um, uh, there's measurements taken at uh, the Office of Trans uh, OTAC. Uh, not terribly good with acronyms, although being with the government, but um, um, the Office of Transportation and um, uh, controls, but also Baltimore Tunnel has a, a number of measurements, and that's kind of an interesting one because it splits up the big trucks from the passenger vehicles and, and such, so we can get measurements in in, in real time. Um, those are those tend to be much smaller than the agricultural um, emissions. Yeah, definitely smaller, but definitely important in the cities. The mobile sources become important in the cities, so. All right. Thank you. And I, I think that that helps to answer. Uh, TW looks like had a question or I guess a comment saying he's assuming that that's a big part of the other 20 percent of the ammonia emissions. And that would definitely be included in there. Um, yeah, I was in that other other pie slice of my presentation. Yeah. All right. Great. Great. The uh, third question was from Ben, and uh, this one's for you, Jesse. He's wondering if you can say any more about what kind of modeling you're using and what kinds of verification methods you're using. Uh, specifically, he wants to know, are there modeling tools you use to predict nitrate runoffs associated with past practices versus adopted BMPs? Yes, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the Chesapeake Bay watershed is broken up in the modeling um, portion of it is broken up into about 2000 different um, smaller um, portions of that, that watershed. Those are typically associated with gauging stations. And at those gauging stations, we, um, we often have measurements of water quality being uh, total uh, dissolved nitrogen, and we measure both the, uh, the nitrate and the ammonium portion of that, as well as um, um, uh, sediment. And so we do a lot of uh, evaluation with that. Are we getting the volume of the runoff correct? Do we have the concentration of the nitrate and the different, um, or the ammonium correct in, um, in the runoff? As far as BMPs, the Chesapeake Bay program has a, uh, a nutrient trading um, plan for uh, for the watershed and um, we do try we do our best to try to model what the existing uh, BMPs are and um, we do a number of sensitivities looking at various BMPs to build a library of um, how uh, effective they are at reducing the load to the Chesapeake Bay and um, build that into a, a number of tools that then um, regional watershed modelers can um, can use to estimate what 
what we would anticipate the load to be with um, with BMPs. There's there's a whole group looking at the efficacy of, of various BMPs, and then another group that um, does a lot of sensitivity, so we can build that um, that relationship between the BMP and the runoff. And I, and I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. And the last question looks like that we have in right now is for Mahmood. Um, Trevor says that you mentioned that better animal performance and health through reduced disease incidence is known for swine production where ammonia is reduced indoors. There was not a clear citation covering that statement in your talk, and he was hoping you would be able to share one. And thank you again for your your talk, as he added. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so... Um... I know at least of an ongoing trial at the moment, and this is part of the effort we are working on, but I also know that the USDA ARS um, had a uh, multiple um, cycles of uh, finishing animals on a production farm, um, looking specifically at this piece uh, after installing um, advanced technology for reducing nitrogen. Um, and I will uh, put the citation um, uh, in, in the uh, chat box here. Uh, they've reported improvements in feed conversion ratio as well as reduction uh, in mortality. That's the team uh, in Florence, South Carolina. Uh, actually, TW just just popped one in again to Mahmoud. Um, so if he did his math right, he's saying uh, two kilograms per dollar. There's about four hundred fifty-three dollars per ton, which within the context of the industrial side of the Clean Air Act would be deemed economically feasible. So just kind of cross-checking those those numbers. Uh, well, thank you for sharing these numbers. I have not run them, and I was very careful to use qualitative uh, economic numbers and not uh, specific dollar amounts. Um, I'm actually that part of what we're trying to do is to have similar numbers with specific practices. But um, uh, yeah, appreciate you sharing that.